Alright guys, and now we're back in business with a very bony showdown between the Tomb Kings and the Skaven. It's going to be DJ Kotep facing off against the dreaded Skaven Warlord, who shall be led by King of the Dead. And uh, King of the Dead definitely showing me how powerful the uh, the triple bone breaker can be. So yes, you get the Warlord or the Chieftain on the bone breaker, you get the Warlord and then you get a Mutant Rat Ogre. And it can be a pretty damn scary pound squad for sure. I'm really, really excited to show you guys this game. It was super close, super fun. And now let us go ahead and take a look at the armies. So for my force, I was expecting some Molder shenanigans from King. As such, I think one of the better assets against Molder is going to be in uh, Arrow Titan here, or the Arrow Titan, however you want to say it. The meme name, the actual name, you guys get the picture. So it does fire damage, which is really good. So when it's beating on those regenerating Molder monsters like Brood Horrors, it's going to be doing some fat damage. Also, a Spirit Leech isn't bad, nor is a Shem's Burning Gaze. So we do have the Titan front line is going to be Skeleton Spearmen mixed with Skeleton Warriors. Double Necrotect on foot, because we have a ton of big monsters that can use that healing. We also do have the Sphinx in the back. Sphinx is anti-large, armor-piercing. Armor-piercing, I think, is pertinent against the Warlord, who does have 70 armor. And on top of that, more fire damage. You know, as you guys can expect, very, very strong against Molder. Now, just in case he didn't go full Molder Mash, and he did come in with, like, let's say, some uh, Play Claw Catapults, uh, Warp Lightning Cannons, you know, Mortar Teams, you know, very Poison Mortar Teams, you guys get the picture. The... Uh, caskets are a really good countermeasure against those bad boys. So I have double casket. Uh, the caskets can usually snipe the poison wind mortars, the jails, uh, all those units relatively effectively. So we got Kotsep on the casket. We have a regular casket here and two Nehekara horsemen in the back just to uh, sweep and make sure nothing gets too close to our juicy, uh, kind of a weaker part of our army, I suppose. So for King's army, he went pretty hard on the ranged as well. He brought double warp lightning cannon, which I think head to head double casket might actually win that. I'm not sure. Still very scary. I'm going to have to use some magic and harass to try and shut these guys down. But he's got double warp lightning. Uh, he does have the pit fighters of Helm's Deep here. Rat ogres on the far side. Triple bone breaker, as you saw. A plague priest, as well as some poison wind mortar. So pretty uh, well balanced army, honestly. He's got some decent melee prowess with his rat ogres and his bone breakers. And of course, pretty good sniping here with the Ickid Sap Zap cannon. So I wasn't sure in this match if I could actually afford to sit back because that was my whole game plan. Like I have a Titan, which is a very slow unit. I don't want to be ponderously marching around his units. Uh, and I do have to waste ammunition here killing. It's not even a waste, but I have to shoot at the poison wind mortars, which means while I'm shooting at the poison wind mortars, I'm losing the advantage I may have against the uh, warp lightning cannons because now both warp lightning cannons potentially can shoot downtown and really punish into my uh, caskets, which uh, is a little bit scary for sure. Um, I think as such, I do make the executive decision here to advance, but the caskets, well, just like I said, are very, very good at punishing mortars and Giselles, infantry. Caskets are actually really, really good against a multitude of targets. Good against low number infantry, good against high number infantry, decent against monstrous infantry like Rat Ogres. They're just an excellent unit. Probably one of the best units on the entire Tomb Kings roster. Something that pretty much always pays for itself. And you can see here we have punished the Poison Wind Mortars. So I was hoping they would run away from the main bulk of the Skaven army, and then I could just come in like a vulture here with the Nehekar Horsemen. I was also trying to slip through, but King was able to move some clan rats as well as some more clan rats here to intercept and cut off my angle. So uh, a little bit nervous. Yeah, the mortars are back online here. My caskets are now starting to take some heavy damage because like I said, while I have been having to shoot here at the Poison Wind Mortars, my bread has been uh, getting buttered in other ways. However, you can see here, Shem's Burning Gaze is going to be coming down from the Titan. We also are using double caskets, and you can see the trade isn't going badly. Shem's Burning Gaze does actually destroy one of the Warp Lightning pieces, which is going to substantially limit the DPS on that unit. And now the Nehekar Horsemen are lurking about, just kind of cycle charging into clan rats, trying to get freebies, really just trying to poke and prod until I can potentially find an opening in my opponent's army here. But now there's a little bit of an opening here in the back, as the Nehekar Horsemen are going to be creeping around and will be jumping into the Poison Wind Mortars, but the Rat Ogres are pretty quick to respond, which uh, do force me to pull back here. So very good play so far from King, just uh, this very ranged kind of standoff play. And in retrospect, looking back at this game here, uh, I probably could have just sat back. I felt like my my caskets weren't taking that much damage, and I was winning the trade versus his ranged tool, so probably just sitting back and playing the casket game would have been smarter, because now I'm marching into his game plan to a sense. Um, however, there is a chance that the Warp Lightning Cannons could have killed my caskets, and then I would have just gotten pounded at a range, so it's, it's a little bit of a toss-up. Very easy to see in hindsight, of course, but at the time, I had to make the snap decision. So we are moving forward here. Skeleton Warriors will be engaging Skaven Slaves, and they do actually win that engagement. However, I'm not sure with the uh, Poison Wind Mortars coming in. Granted, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to poison their fellow Skaven. Very, very Skaven-esque. And uh, we do also have this nice little tree line here. So King has to shoot through trees to an extent to hit my big monster. So the Titan's going to be moving in. The Sphinx is going to be moving in as also, uh, as well, as also, as well. And finally, we are able to get some horsemen back here to shut down the last of his Warp Lightning Cannon. So that's offline. We might sacrifice the Nehekar Horseman. I think it's worth it. Granted, it looks like the last piece may have just died from the Casket Blast. So I guess, uh, in a way, perhaps not worth it. 
So it looks like there's going to be a rat summon coming down. The Titan is going to be moving forward to fight the Warlord. I think I was going to use a Spirit Leech there. I'm not quite sure why the animation got stopped. But uh, nonetheless, the Titan should be able to deliver some huge, huge beatings here to the Warlord. The Warlord is very much the target it would like to hit. And Verminous Valor used by King. Look at that. And uh, the Valorant Skaven here running. But it uh, looks like the big old Sphinx might be able to get a blow there. Nice hit from the Sphinx. Able to do some decent HP damage. And I do also have some, some skeleton support here. Not too much. Still a very scary situation. And now both of my caskets are raining some hot fire into some clan rats as well as the other Warp Lightning Cannon. So I would say the range trade going pretty well. But as you can see, my prediction that sitting back would have paid off definitely was the right way to go. Because now I'm kind of embroiled in a fight with his monsters. I'm giving him an opportunity to earn value, which he is. The Bonebreakers have like kind of a small hitbox. They fit really well side by side together. So all three of the Bonebreakers are able to just start beating on the Sphinx. And that's something you don't really think about too much is if you have like two uh, Necro Sphinxes, right? They're not going to be able to as easily surround and hit something because they kind of bump into each other. But the Bonebreakers are actually very lean. And as such, I'm forced to pull back. So I do use the Restore to get some HP on that bad boy. And honestly, King really came out ahead in that monstrous trade. The Warlord and the Bonebreaker Goon Squad was really quite scary. However, the other uh, Warp Lightning Cannon is down, which is great. Um, at this point, I realize, okay, I think I've won the ranged fight. So let's kind of start to pull back a little bit. Another huge folly I made is that I can't really use my magic. Grand Herofant Kotep's back there. I've just been using the shield ability to trigger the passive, but it didn't occur to me at the time because I was so expecting to have the fight come to me with the double caskets uh, that I didn't really plan for this. So I've been kind of without magic for quite some time, which definitely sucks. Now here, the Necro Sphinx is able to get some fat damage back. The Mutant Rat Ogre gets a little bit beat up, and the Titan as well uh, was able to get some work here on the Plague Priest, but uh, now it's going to be attacked by all the Bone Breakers, I would imagine. But nonetheless, Bone Breakers do have the speed advantage, but uh, my monsters definitely hit quite a bit harder and can definitely do some work. So pulling back the spears here, I did see some rat ogres trying to slip by, and I would imagine those rat ogres are probably going to be coming in and trying to uh, goon out Kotsap here in the back. So starting the long hustle here to get those skeleton spearmen back. Beside that, let's see here, we do have the Nakar horsemen still causing some disruption in the back lines. Both warp lightning cannons are pretty much a non-factor at this point. The only range tools he really has going for him is the poison wind mortars, which are doing some good work for sure. I would imagine they more than paid for themselves at this point. Granted, you have to remember when looking at poison wind mortars and globed ears, I'm pretty sure it does include friendly fire damage. So um, yeah, it's something to take into account. Granted, it's mostly escape and slaves. So we have a pretty important blob fight here. We have the Sphinx and the Titan fighting, and also you can see he's committed a lot of resources here. And I do decide to use the Ushapti summon, maybe a little bit premature. So there actually, I believe, was a nerf to that. The Ushapti summon uh, summoning time has been greatly increased. Uh, I noticed that here in this game, and I think I saw it in the patch notes after when I went and looked as well. So I used the Ushapti summon. I was hoping to instantly trap all of his monsters in there and get some value, but alas, the Ushapti summon kind of wasted there. It still does give good buffering to my monsters, which I was happy about, but it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Now King's going to be coming in with the, the Brutal Pound Squad, and look how well they all pile in. Uh, getting a nice attack here on the Sphinx. The Sphinx taking some serious damage. Bounce of Power is pretty damn even here, guys. This is a really, really just absolute nail-biter of a game. And DJ Kotsap in the back was attacked here by the Rat Ogres, but the Skeleton Spears with the Dejaf's Cursed Blade. So finally I'm able to use some damage, or some magic. I use the Narrow's Incantation here and the Cursed Blades to give some, some stopping power. And the Rat Ogres are actually dying to those Spears, which I was quite happy about. Those are no mere Rat Ogres. Those are the ROR Rat Ogres, so they're serious business. Now the Titan is standing and fighting. Plenty of Spear support, but the Mutant Rat Ogres are actually doing a really good job chasing down my big monsters. And here you can see the Sphinx of Usak here is going to be uh, running for its life. 1,000 HP, but the Mutant Rat Ogres are quite a bit faster, I think. Yes, no, not that much faster, actually. 68 speed against uh, 70 here, so able to get away a little bit. Now, back in the blob fight, though, it's going well. You can see the Rat Ogres are broken off. Most of the Skaven support is being pounded by the Caskets. All the Clan Rats just getting the dirty business there. Both Necrotex are alive, and uh, the Titan's also in really good shape, and we also do get a good surround here. So finally, we're able to kind of corral one of these stupid Ogres. And from here, the uh, Necrotex should be able to start whomping on that bad boy pretty good. He's shaken, and it looks like the Sphinx was the recipient of another uh, restore there from my Necrotex, putting him up to almost 2,000 HP. But he is at his healing cap, mind you, so, um, you know, the value has been done. So what do I have left for infantry? I got some spears in the back. Those Rat Ogres, thankfully, are rampaging, so they are the Berserker Rat Ogres. So they're... The downside of them, of course, is being the Rampage, so they're going to be rampaging into Spearmen and pretty much just die there. And we are able to beat up the Warlord while I look away for one second. The Titan plus the Necrotex were able to slap him up pretty good if memory serves. He will be coming back, and uh, he's got the World's Edge armor. This bad boy rocking 130. Pretty serious business, but, you know, in chasing him, and of course I have the very slow Titan, I do allow King to come in with his uh, his Chieftain here. So badass. The Chieftain, of course, even if his Lord dies, so if King were to lose his Warlord, his entire army would get a leadership buff of plus 8 because basically the Chieftain takes control of the army, which I think is a super cool mechanic. I actually really like that for this game. 
So at this point, I saw an onslaught of Skaven coming at me. I was like, oh my god. So I'm just going to start running back, trying to get to the support of Katep, because Katep has a shit ton of Winds of Magic. So I know if I can start getting some Winds of Magic, also get these Skeleton Spears to maybe help out a little bit, because all my other Chaff units have basically been killed by the Poison Wind Mortars, guys. So it's feeling a little bit grim in that respect. Here comes the Narrow's Incantation of Protection. I was kind of anticipating a Rat Ogre charge there, but I was able to get away a little bit. But now King is going to be turning around, going for the kill here with the Chieftain, as well as the Mutant Rat Ogre. My Necro Techs are very low. Granted, they do have decent bonus for infantry, so they can, you know, put a dent in some of these Clan Rats and things like that. And the Sphinx in the back is charging in at 125 HP, killing a couple Rat Ogres before it goes down. Certainly very helpful, supporting this Casket, which is... Stuck in fighting, and Kotap is moving forward as well. I'm completely out of ammo, but I do have the Darude Sandstorm coming in, baby! And there it is. Very, very nice stuff. The Darude Sandstorm breaks, like, all the Skaven support. That was just what the Doctor ordered, because I was really feeling bogged down there. My Necrotex were dying and crumbling, but now that the Skaven Chaff is gone, the Titan is able to really do its piece here, and it does have Curse Blades as well. Fire damage, I don't know if either of these guys are weak to fire. It's more so against Brood Horrors. Um, obviously, the Rad Ogres, the mean Rad Ogre mounts, don't really care about that, so it is what it is. So the Skaven continuing to pile in, but the Laser Eyes coming in. You can see the Warlord does get uh, zapped by some of that beautiful, beautiful uh, fantasy sci-fi action. And Nero's Incantation of Protection going down to the Titan. Pretty much this whole game is banking on the Titan right now. Like, if the Titan falls to these Bonebreakers, cycle charging it, and King is doing a really good job of that, I'm 100% dead. And it looks like this Necrotect right here is also on Death's Bed as well. I'm out of Restore, so it's not too much of a big deal, but... I still do have some Spearmen coming in, which is like a huge saving grace. Um, Titans and big monsters, generally speaking, you guys, if you are in multiplayer and campaign as well, if you do have a big monster, you want to be supporting it with like infantry and chaff so it doesn't take the majority of the pokes and attacks and it can really focus its efforts. Now, in this case, the Iro Titan does have a Shem's Burning Gaze. It's going to be going after the Warlord. 683 on this bad boy, shooting downtown, and it nails him down to 307. Beautiful stuff, negative 37. Not quite shattering, but um, still quite happy about that. Now the Titan is able to pimp slap to its leisure here. And you can see all the Skaven Slaves and all these bad boys are going to be running for the hills. The Warlord might come back, but at 307, it's certainly not going to be a fully operational Skaven battle station here. And now the Titan and the Ponderous Skeleton Spearmen moving in, trying to save Kotep, who is taking quite a bit of damage. But one hit, come on, give it to us! Kotep gets in the way. And the Chieftain is able to scurry into the shadows here. Now, the Necrotex is actually doing some decent work. Um, me and Rad Ogres actually have decent melee attack and melee defense at 39 there. Uh, but my other Necrotex is probably going to be going down here, but still getting a couple blows before it goes there. And in the back, King is able to kill my other Casket, which was out of ammo, so not too concerned about that. But the Big Titan is the, uh, the last Valiant Defender of my people here. And this is still a pretty damn close game. Like, a couple of good shots from his Ogres and maybe knocking my Necrotex out of the formation like that. Little things like that. He can really take advantage of my uh, my speed here because the Titan is very, very slow. You can see every, everywhere the Titan goes, it's like just clearing the Red Sea, right? Like the Rat Ogres just like scatter and run, which is so funny. But Kotep is here now, which is great. Kotep is able to provide some magic support. That Titan pre uh, protecting his uh, master here is going to be sending that mutant Rat Ogre uh, flying across the map here. And now it looks like the Warlord is coming back. No, I think it's still running. Kotep dropping another Sandstorm here, which does actually go through the Mortars. And uh, the Necrotect is in Mortal Kombat here with the Mutant Rat Ogre. Might actually be able to win that. Um, that Rat Ogre, like, one good shot's going to butter his bread. Titan comes in and terrifies the Chieftain. And now the Iro Titan probably should be able to turn around. But, man, is Kotev going to survive? He's so low. 417 here. Titan is marching. It has earned two chevrons this game, it looks like. Man, just an absolute MVP. Now for the Skaven, we just have the Plague Priest, really. And the Titan is uh, a very, very good piece against infantry characters here. And should be able to finish that off as all the Skaven Warlords and Bonebreakers are going to be fleeing for the hills. Good night, sweet Plague Priest. He will be missed. GG. Very well played to King. A nice, proper 12-minute game. Super fun builds. Which, you know, honestly, I thought his build was quite good against Doom Kings. Like, it, the Warp Lightning Candidates against the Caskets. He's got the Triple Bone Breaker to goon your monsters. Um, I really like that build from King. I actually thought that was awesome. Granted, I think the build would have been a little bit better if you had cut the Bone Breaker Lord for Throt. Um, just to get the healing. Like, the extra healing. But, however, the you know, the Warlord did his piece, man. Let's, let's not knock him down. Now, value accrued. 1900. 1,500 here. 23 on that bad boy. Uh, the Big Sphinx didn't do as well, but, you know, he focused most of, most of his efforts on that. But, you know, those were the real breadwinners uh, in my army. So, yeah. Uh, the Titan was great. I, I have a new build I want to show you guys in this matchup. After I played this game, I kind of went back to the drawing board to, like, guarantee that I win that ranged fight. So I'm going to show you guys that bad boy here in just a second. And for the Skaven, I loved it, man. 1,000 gold here. 2,000 on that freaking Chieftain. Uh, the little Plague Priest, of course, didn't do too much. But Rat Ogres, ooh, the Pit Fighters actually got a lot of damage. That's because they killed the Caskets once they were out of ammo, though, so it doesn't really count for much, to be honest. And yeah, Warp Lightning Cannons didn't do as well. Honestly, the positioning of one of the Warp Lightning Cannons was really off, having it in the tree line there. But yeah, it was a really fun game. I think 
Yeah, two caskets versus two warp lightnings. That's something I got to test because it is really important in this matchup. And the mortar teams, of course. Oh yeah, nothing big. Just thirty-two thousand damage. Oh, that's so crazy. Mostly against skeletons, but that still is really, really good. And uh, yeah, I really like this build. It was super awesome and really fun. So well played to him. And uh, now let's go ahead and look here, guys, at the other build I've come up with. So normally I know I don't change the builds too much uh, if it does show a victory there. But that was by the skin of a uh, skin of my teeth there. So. Tomb Kings versus Skaven. This was the new rendition I came up with. So you get Ark in the Black, um, just on horseback, because he can evade the uh, Radigers, hopefully, that way. Um, Spirit Leech, I don't know if Buna's really worth it, to be honest. Maybe we just got Buna and get a little bit more gold. Something to think about. But you get a Bone Giant and a Casket. Um, I think that will be better, because Bone Giants can really snipe Warp Lightnings with the Casket here. Um, now I'm actually going to have more functional magic. Like, I can be Spirit Leeching those Warlords, and if they have, like, Council Guard, I can fade a Buna them. Uh, on top of that, you can overcast Spirit Leech and pretty much get insane range. So I could like overcast Spirit Leech, Bone Giant, and Casket to kill the Warp Lightning Cannons. And the Sphinx is cool and all, but I'd rather play defensively. Like, I want them to come to me. Um, so Triple Skeleton Horseman Archer just to harass and a little bit of a, you know, mobile core here with Skeleton Horseman. I think this build is much better. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that one and uh, well played again to King of the Dead. And we will see you guys on the other side. Take care.